Good morning, class. My name is Dr. E, and today we will be learning about the evolutionary arms race. Can anyone explain to me what it is? No? Well, good thing I'm an expert. An arms race is developed between two or more traits, species, or genes that are experiencing co-evolution to the point at which adaptations arise in response to an adaptation the other had. Wait, wait. I'm confused. Okay, let me give you some examples and let me know if it is making some sense. There was once a very hungry crab. He had a craving for some delicious snails. However, when the crab went to dig his claws into the snail's shell, he noticed it was thick and spiny. What he didn't know was that the snails had evolved these types of shells so that they would not get eaten by him. Over time, the crab and his ancestors hit the gym and developed strong, powerful claws that would enable them to eat the sneaky, hard snails. The snails realize they must fight back and become even thicker and have more spines. After the crabs realize this, they put in even more hours at the gym so that their claws have a chance against the strong shells. And the story goes on. There is no clear winner in this story, and both species will continue to evolve. So how were the crabs and snails able to evolve? Did they already have those characteristics in their populations? Good question. The crabs with powerful claws already existed in the population, and those were the ones that survived to reproduce. The snails that couldn't defend themselves against these stronger claws died off, and only the ones that had thicker and more spiny shells lived and reproduced. This puts pressure on the crabs again, forcing them to evolve even stronger claws. Wow, that's so cool. It seems like it's a chain effect. Yes, it kind of is. To use a scientific term, it is a positive feedback loop. As one species adapts, this causes the other species to also adapt. Does this occur in all species? Not necessarily. In the previous example, the crab and snail were in a predator-prey relationship, but this can also happen in parasite-host relationships, as shown here, with the dog and fleas. In all cases, a trait must exist in a population that offers an advantage over the other species. I think I understand it now, but why are these relationships so important to scientists? Great question! Aside from the benefits of understanding interspecies interactions, the concept of evolutionary arms race has several broader applications. For example, it is helping medical companies develop antibiotics that are able to kill constantly evolving bacteria. That is so neat! I had no idea evolution could be used to save lives. Definitely. Studying how two species competitively evolve allows researchers to apply that same science to antibiotic resistance because antibiotic drugs are based off of compounds and relationships found in nature. Thanks, Dr. E. Anytime. See you next class.